Another new vocabulary term, perpendicular bisector. If you separate it, we've talked about both of those words. So let's start here first. Tell me something about that term, perpendicular. What's coming to your mind? Perpendicular. Five. Uh, that adds to 90. Don't know, nothing adds to 90. There's no adding up here. That's supplementary and complementary. Perpendicular. Forms a what? A oh, right angle. Right angle. Right. So something's going to form a right angle. Now, we didn't go over that word yesterday, but we went over on Friday. Bisector. What's happening when something gets bisected? Bisected. Two. Uh, it's just split into two equal angles. Two equal so, angles, and this, or just two equal parts. So here's what's going to happen right now. We're going to draw a line that does two things. Forms A. Adam, going back to you. Forms A. Uh, what did you just tell me? Perpendicular. Forms A. Right angle. And uh, it's, gonna it's gonna cut something in half. So that's what we're about to do. So everyone take a look. Here's my gibbon. We're gonna draw, put your compass off to the side. Draw EF is the perpendicular bisector of CD. What is being cut in half? Read the gibbon. EF is the perpendicular bisector of CD. What's being cut in half? Charlie? CD. CD. Everyone draw line segment CD for me. Draw. I don't need the compass yet. So just draw me a line segment CD. So what's got to go on the endpoints? C and D. All right, now you're going to draw me EF. That makes it a perpendicular bisector. So watch what I'm going to do up here first, and then you do the correct version. Somebody tell me why that's not correct. That's not going to be EF. Why not? It's not bisecting it. It might, might form a right angle, but it's not bisecting it. Everyone agree? All right. Why wouldn't EF work here? I'm cutting CD in half. Why not, Charlie? That's not right angles. So I want you right now, as I walk around, draw EF, line EF, so it's perpendicular and bisect CD. Go ahead. With, just draw, guys. Draw. Take your darn pencil and draw it. There's no, no, we're not, we're not doing a construction here. Just draw. Remember, draw means take your pen or pencil and freehand it. So draw me a line EF that looks like it's perpendicular and bisects your line segment CD. Make sure you call it EF too, right? Make sure it's a line so it should have what on it? It's a line. What should it have on it? Arrows, not endpoints, and it should have EF on it. Okay, we got to put a lot of symbols on this. How are you going to show me it's perpendicular? What's got to go on here? So at least what? One right angle. Put at least one right angle on it. That shows me it's perpendicular. How are you going to show me it bisects? Hash marks. Which, on where? EF or CD? CD, because that's the one being cut in half. There you go. That is EF is a perpendicular bisector. Last thing. <coughs> See this point where they intersect? Name it. What's that point called? Vocabulary term that we talked about. Already this unit. This is a the what of CD. The what of CD? Let's dig deep here. Let's dig deep. Seven. Midpoint. Midpoint. Great job. <clears throat> good job, everyone. Good job. Perpendicular bisector. Good. All right, grab your compass. Now I'm going to show you how to construct one. And good news, uh, this is this is an old one. I've already shown you how to do this. We just never called it a perpendicular bisector because you didn't know the term yet. Haven't we done this already? Find the midpoint? Mm -hmm. I remember anybody remember how to do that construction? Because it's going to be the same construction. Remember the line we drew down? That's a perpendicular bisector. 
to find the midpoint, the line we drew down, that's exactly what a perpendicular bisector is. Uh, put your compass point on A and make sure you do what? You guys reviewing here with me? Go more than half length. Open up your compass more than half the length of the segment. Yep. And remember, you want to make a decent size arc here, about half, a half circle arc. Then you go over to the other end point. And some of you, hey, hey, some of you guys did this on your quiz to me. You got to make sure they intersect in two spots. Some of you guys only did one, and that was it. You need two. You need two points of intersection to line up your straight edge. Two points of intersection. And then go ahead, draw your line in, and then this line is your perpendicular bisector. Markings, markings, markings. Show me it's a perpendicular bisector. Put your right angle symbol in and your hash marks in. Questions? Go in. All right, good. So perpendicular, it forms a right angle, cuts the line segment in half. Oh boy, there he is, huh? There he is. You wanna to try to guess to the next slide? Do we want nominations? Do we wanna do this or what? Yeah. Think you're ready for it? So happy, so happy. All right, let's do this then. Let's finish the notes. X, Y, bisects A, B. What's getting bisected? If I give you that fact right there, X, Y, bisects A, B, what's being bisected? Uh, eight, which line segment's being bisected? In the back, Spencer. What's being bisected? Who's got eight? Not here? Eight's not here? No. Hello, hello. Sorry. What's being bisected? X, Y, bisects A, B. X, Y, bisects A, B. A, B is being cut in half. Everyone draw A, B for me. Line segment A, B. Does, it, does anybody see the word perpendicular? No. So the only thing X, Y should be doing, I don't care what angle it does it in, but it should be cutting A, B in half. So I could do this right now. There you go. You could, could you do it perpendicular? Yeah, you could draw it perpendicular. That's fine too. Just as long as when you draw X, Y, N, it better be cutting A, B, and half. What's still got to go on my diagram to show that bisecting's happening? Uh, here we go, nine. Hash marks. Okay, here's the catch though on X, Y, or A, B. Because it's being cut in half. Good. There you go. All right, let me flip it on you now. A, B bisects X, Y. What's being cut in half now on the next one? 11. A, B bisects X, Y. What's being cut in half? X, Y. X, Y now. And here's my challenge to you guys. Don't draw a new diagram. Draw the same diagram. But there's going to be one little small change. What's the change now? What should it, what should the change be? Uh, five. Where am I going to put my hash marks now? On AB. On AB? Yeah. Which what's getting bisected here? Oh, X Y. What's being cut in half then? Uh, X Y. So where should the hash marks XY. go? On X Y. Okay. All right, now I'm going to challenge you. Read the next construction. Read the next construction. I need a line that bisects AB and, and, and goes through X. So, whoa, whoa, I don't know. 
What's that tell me? What am I picking up here? Yeah, my compass. This isn't freehand now. Sorry, this isn't freehand. Now, here's a, here's the question I want, and this is why it's going to get a little more challenging. Remember the old fish, open up your compass more than half the length? Why isn't that one going to help me here? Why not? Go ahead. What do you think? Well, it's going to, it's, it's going to bisect, but what's the problem? Charlie? It needs to bisect. It needs to pass through X. Yeah, and when I do this, it's going to look like that. And it says it's got to go through X, though. That's a problem. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're still going to use that construction, but after we're done, we'll show how it helps us. All right, so everyone go ahead, open up your compass more than half the length. You know the deal here, but just don't draw on the line down the middle. All right, just draw, don't draw in that line. Make that half circle, go to the other end point. Everyone seeing it now? Why, if I line up my straight edge and draw it through, that's not what I asked for. It doesn't go through X, but it will help me. It will help me. All right, suggestions. How's this going to help me? If I can't line up my straight edge and draw it in. Rachel, got a suggestion? Because it showed you that the point went where it should go through. Perfect. Here's what I am going to do. I am going to, ready? I am going to take my straight edge, line it up, but I'm just going to use it to figure out where the midpoint is of AB. That's all. I don't need to draw the full line through because that's not going to go through X. I'm just going to use it to find the midpoint. Now does everyone see how I can do my bisector going through X? Okay. Now I line up X in my midpoint and there's my bisector. So anytime I need a bisector, whether it be perpendicular or not, I can always use that construction. Only thing my diagram's missing? Ash marks, right? Ash marks, not arrows. I'm so heated. That happens to you guys. Oh, good? Live it up, too. Live it up. Probably your last time all year, of course, now that little genie comes in. All right, ready. Now what am I looking for? A line that's perpendicular. Tell me something here. What's this going to look like at the end? Perpendicular to AB. 12, so what's got to happen? Perpendicular to AB. Perfect, they form a right angle. So, hey, it says construct, so we are going to use our compass, but, hey, this is what it should look. Now oh, that's awful. Should look like that at the end, but nice and neater because you're going to use a compass. So everyone okay on what I need at the end here? Question, why isn't the, why isn't this one going to work on this? Why can I not do this construction here? What's the problem? Oh, it'll be perpendicular. I do the little fish and draw my line through. It's going to be perpendicular, but what is it not going to do? That this problem is asking for. Oh, it'll guys say, hey, guys, it'll look, I'm going to do this and this. I'm going to draw my line through and it'll be 90 degrees. Read the directions, though. It's got to go through P, right? That's not going to go through P. So I need a brand new construction now. And here it is. Take your compass, put it on point P. Take your compass point and put it on P. And now here's where you're going to have to play around with your compass. I need an arc right now that intersects AB in two spots. Think of it as like a smile, fate, a smile. One, two, it's got to intersect in two spots. So play around with your compass opening and make an arc that intersects in two AB in two places. One, two. Two spots. Everyone got two spots. 
Open up your compass slightly wider now than you just had it. And I'll tell you why at the end I want that, but open up just slightly wider. Everyone see your two points of intersection on AB. Go to one point right now. Put your compass on one point. So put your compass on one of those points. Now, I'm about to do it below AB. You are certainly allowed to do this arc above AB. It's up to you where you want to do it, but I'm going to do it below. And I'm going to make another arc. And then I'm going to go take a look. I'm going to go over the other point of intersection and make sure those last two arcs intersect each other. See how mine are going to intersect right there. Some of you may need to go back to your first one and make it a little longer. That happens. That happens. So make sure they intersect above or below your line. And my hope is when you grab your straight edge and line up that point of intersection with P, they're right above or below each other. Forms a nice perpendicular line, 90 degrees. So if you want a perpendicular line only, you can do the smile or the, or it might be a frown depending on where P is. Missing something though. What's got to go on my diagram? Missing something. Five. Uh, hash marks. Okay. Did we do anything with the oh, word bisects? Uh, nope. So I don't need hash marks. I did do something with this word though. I made a perpendicular line. Oh, 90 degrees. All right, all good with perpendicular because you're going to try it one more time with this one, except where's point P now? Where's point P? Charlie, where is it? On the line. It's on the line, but good news, the same construction we just did. But now you have a choice. You're still going to put your compass point on P, and you have to intersect your line in two spots. It's just a matter of do you want to do it this way like a frown, or do you want to do it this way like a smile? It's up to you. So go ahead, I'll walk around if you need help. So intersect the line twice, open up your compass slightly wider, and then go from those two points of intersection. So hit line L twice, open up your compass slightly wider, and then go from each point of intersection, and you can do it above or below the line, it doesn't matter. Just make sure those last two intersect each other. Good. Everyone's putting the right angle symbol on there too. Yeah. Good. All right. So you guys know how to do a bisector now. You know how to do a perpendicular line. So we're going to go to one more unique construction. We're not going to do all of them in your notes here. We're going to go to page 24 now.
All right, let's finish off class here. Using comp, yep, construct. All right, quick vocabulary. Anybody ever heard of an equilateral triangle? Can you tell me anything about it? Equilateral, yep, sides of triangle, three equal sides. Three sides, all three sides congruent, yep. All sides congruent. So we're gonna use our compass and straight edge to make a triangle that has all three sides congruent. And each side, to keep reading. Each side must be the equal to the length of the diagonal of ABCD. You guys know what, ever heard of this term, diagonal? Diagonal of a four-sided figure? Connects the corners. Okay, so everyone take your straight edge right now and draw in lines diagonal AC or BD. It's up to you. They're both the same length. So take your straight edge. Let's draw in diagonal AC or BD. All three sides have to be that length that you just draw in, drew in, okay? And it's got to be down here on the right. So everyone already right, on what we're about to attempt. Triangle, all three sides, got to be that length. All right, this is the first construction we did. Can you guys copy AC or your diagonal onto this ray? Open it up to the length of your diagonal. Come down to point R and copy it onto that ray. All good. Some of you actually know what to do next there, huh? Hey, here's one side of our triangle right here. How many sides does it have though? Triangle, how many? Three sides, right? So here's side one from R to this point here. Now put your compass on that point that just intersected your ray. And now we're gonna make a very, we don't need to make a big arc. I, hey, I just want these two to intersect. Cause every way, hey, take a look. There's the second side of my triangle right there I'm about to make. All right, so make sure they intersect each other. All right, help me now, help, ready? We just said, here's one side of the triangle. Somebody help me get another side. There's one side. Where's the other sides? Where do I go from here to get a second side? I don't need my compass anymore. Where do I go to get a second side? Go down. Darn right, where the, where the arcs intersected. Here's my second side. And everyone see where the third side's gonna be. Now from the point of intersection to end point R. And if you're unsure, take your compass, measure each side and make sure they're the same. Your compass should not have to open or close now. Just remeasure with your compass and make sure that all sides are the same length. That's an equilateral triangle. Uh, not done now. Who told me? I think it was Spencer told me uh, all sides congruent. You want to show that on your diagram? There you go. There you go. Good job, guys. Little hash marks. All right, and then one last make you think question. Example three. Using, using that triangle, give me a 30 degree angle. Not 29, not 31 degrees, a 30. Oh boy. All right, let's talk. Spencer told us all three sides are congruent in an equilateral triangle. Well, let's uh, expand that a little bit. There's more. All sides are congruent and 
Anybody know anything else? All three angles are equal. Anybody know how many degrees in a triangle? No, more than 90. 180. So let's try, oh boy, mental math. Oh, smoke are going to come out of your ears. 180 degrees in a triangle. All three are congruent, all three angles. What's each angle measurement then? 60. 60. Whoa, whoa. Time out. So you're telling, don't write it down. You're telling me that's a 60 degree angle, right? I'm asking for 30. How do I get there? Vocabulary term. I got 60, looking for 30. How do I get there? I need a bisector. Cut it in half, right? Which we know how to do. We just need to review. So we're going to take this 60 degree angle, bisect it, and I'm going to have two what angles? There, oh, that's how I get the 30 now. All right, so take your compass. Let's see if anybody can help me out. Put it on angle R, put it on vertex R. Good review here. We did this one last week, I believe. All right, what do I do to bisect angle R? Help me out here. What do I do now to bisect? I'm not going to pop up the YouTube video, so I need your help. Where's it go from here? Or what do you, what's it even look like I have to do from here? It's really only one thing, and that is go through both sides of your angle. Make an arc through both sides of your angle. Next. Next. How many points? Of, you just have two points of intersection, right, on each? Go to each point and make an arc above that first one. Fireworks. Make sure those last two, inter, when you go from, yeah, yeah look, I'm looking, going from each point of intersection. There you go. Keep your compass open in the same all throughout. And draw in your bi angle bisector. And just label one of those angles, one of those two angles, 30 degrees. So we know. Questions? Okay. I know there's no homework assignment, but I still need you guys to do some practice here up into the bell. So everyone go to page 28 right now. See if you can get through numbers one and two. Okay, see so if you can get through numbers one and two right now. Again, you're not responsible for finishing it because, again, I'm keep, I'll keep to my word and no homework. Let's see what you can do with one and two. A little practice. Tomorrow we review. And I'll get back your uh, quizzes tomorrow.